This is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're looking at the Mafex John Wick Chapter Two action figure. This is John Wick from the second film. This is the second John Wick figure that Mafex has released. So let's check out the packaging here. You can see inside the package got Keanu Reeves. Looks like he has two different heads. See so Keanu Reeves at the front here. John Wick Chapter Two Mafex, the 85th figure in the Mafex line. Looks like we come with his dog. Looks like at least one alternate hand with a pencil, a couple pistols, looks like an assault rifle and a combat shotgun. The top of the package, John Wick Chapter 2. On the side, John Wick Chapter 2, he's sitting there with a pistol. Other side, he's sitting there with a shotgun, ready to go. The bottom here, we've got a barcode as well as a whole bunch of credits. On the back side here, you can see the figure. All of his various accessories, four different guns, two different heads, tons of different poses, the pencil, and the dog. I was a little bit disappointed that the Mafex John Wick from the first film did not come with this dog, but I'm pretty excited that the DST Diamond Select Toys version that is coming out pretty soon will have that dog. So we'll have a complete John Wick pet collection in the long run. Now you may notice I have two of these figures. I'm a huge sucker for suited bodies. They can be used for civilians, businessmen, thugs, mobsters, so many different uses in my action figure world. My original John Wick actually had intentions of using a suited body for a specific character and this one here I'm just getting an extra one for whatever I happen to need it for in the future. So with no further ado, let's open this guy up. Alright, well now that you got this figure out of the package, here he is with all the accessories laid out. And you can see here's John Wick, we've got his dog, He's got six alternate hands totaling eight, an alternate head totaling two, and he's got four guns, shotgun, assault rifle, and two pistols. But before we look at his accessories, let's check out the actual figure. Decent Keanu Reeves likeness here. He's got the black, white suit, looking pretty good. I can't wait to compare him to the John Wick 1.0 to see if there's any differences. Overall, pretty bland suit but looking pretty good, all the detail. And then of course we've got his dog. Really, really happy they included this. And then here's the figure broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable pieces detached. And then here are both of the figures broken down as far as they can go. Next let's look at his accessories. First of all, I'd like to mention he comes with a really nice Mafex stand. I'm not much of a stand guy, so I'm going to leave this wrapped in the plastic and put it into my huge box of stands, never to be seen again. But the Mafex stands are pretty nice. They can keep your eye on a ton of different action poses, midway in the air, flying, kicking, etc., etc. So next, let's check out his hands. He does have eight of them total. Two of them here that are completely open and relaxed. Another one here that's sort of semi-open. This one here has a pencil doing his infamous pencil trick. And we've got one that can hold an item. It's got a hole in the side. And we've got a trigger finger for the other hand. And we've got two fisted ones in the back. So here he is with his relaxed open hands. He can keep them at his side pretty much when he's got nothing else going on. Where these, these are the default hands that came attached to the figure. Here he is wearing his fisted hands, looking like he's angry, get ready to fight somebody. One thing I did find cool about absolutely all of his hands is on his left hand here, he's got his wedding ring on his ring finger, still remembering his wife that passed away. And then here he is with his semi-open left hand and his right hand holding this pencil that he's able to kill somebody with. John Wick is such an experienced and skilled assassin. He can kill somebody with simply a pencil. Kind of reminds me of the pencil trick from the Dark Knight that Joker did. And then here he is with his two hands that can actually hold stuff. These two will probably be my, my default hands. You can see his right hand with the trigger finger 
almost looks like he might be also able to be used as pointing at something. In this left hand here, it's got a hole in the middle. He should be able to hold a gun with either one of these. Next, let's check out his two heads. On the left here, we've got his standard head. On the right, his bladed up head. His standard head will definitely be my default choice for John Wick for the most part. But in each one of his movies, he always gets into a bloodied up, beat up head scene. Here he is wearing his standard head. And then here he is with his bloodied up, beat up head. And then here are both of his heads next to each other. You can see not only is he bloodied up, but his hair is in disarray as well. And then here is the John Wick from Chapter 1 and John Wick from Chapter 2 with their normal default heads. As you can see here, they sure didn't use the same head sculpt for either guy, which is pretty cool. And we'll check out the body a little bit later in this video. And then here is John Wick from Chapter 1 and from Chapter 2 with their bloodied up heads. Once again, not the same head sculpt, so pretty cool there. So next I'll check out his weapons. He's got two pistols. One of them is a slightly smaller version. We've got another one that appears to have an extended clip. Nice little detail on both these guys. It's got the grooves, grips on the handle and some detailing at the top. Then we've got his combat shotgun here. I like that you can see the bullet sticking out. Overall, this thing looks pretty cool. And then we've got his Tactical assault rifle. I like the cloth strap. I like the detailing on it. Different color on the magazine. You can see the bullet in the chamber. Overall, looking pretty nice. And then here he is holding his smallest pistol with his trigger finger hand. You can see the trigger finger actually goes into the trigger. And then here he is holding his second pistol with his trigger finger hand. And I must say, I tried to put a pistol into either one of his hands. It looks like this John Wick from Chapter 2 does not come with a left hand able to hold a gun. This hand here, if I were to take a knife and cut between the fingers and the thumb, it would give it the flexibility for him to hold a gun there. Not sure if I'm going to do that or not, time will tell, but as it is right now, he can only hold one gun at a time. And then here he is holding his assault rifle with his trigger finger hand. One thing that's been pretty cool about the John Wilk films is Keanu Reeves actually trained to use each one of these weapons, very realistic. He was able to hit all the shots and targets. I've seen some videos on YouTube about it. Pretty cool that it was very authentic. He was trained by some of the best shooters out there. He can also hold this weapon with two different hands. His left hand supporting the gun, holding the sort of handle at the front of it. Even though it doesn't work as far as holding the trigger of the gun in that hand, he can at least support his weapons that way. He can also holster the weapon using the harness that's attached to the assault rifle. And then one more thing I do notice about this gun, it's got the clip at the bottom here and it has a second clip for easy access. He runs out, he can swap it out pretty easily, kind of cool. And then here he is holding his shotgun. It works best if you take his left hand and swap it with an open hand so he can support his shotgun that way. And then these guns that John Wick came with are pretty popular in the game Fortnite. There was a John Wick limited edition mode that came out around the time the movie came out recently and they incorporate some of these newer guns into the game. So here you can see some Jazzwares, Fortnite figures, use these guns to take each other out. Now to take a look at John Wick's dog. This is the dog from his second film. We all know what happened to the dog in the first film. So here he is up close. 
looking pretty good. It's got the collar, a little bit of detail on the chest area there. His only point of articulation is going to be his head. It can move around and up and down a little bit on a ball joint there. Nothing else can move, but really happy to have this accessory. So next, let's check him out compared to some other dog figures in my action figure collection, starting with the largest ones and working our way smaller. Here he is next to a couple of terror dogs from Diamond Select Ghostbusters. And then here they are next to a couple of transparent terror dogs. And here they are next to the blue transparent terror dog. And then here they are next to a few predator hounds from NECA from the film Predators. And then here they are next to a wolf action figure. Not actually sure what line this is from. And then here they are next to the most recently released NECA Alien 3 dog. And then here they are next to a couple of NECA Freddy Krueger dogs. And then here they are next to a Stars and Stripes dog from Kick-Ass 2. And here they are next to a few different Ace the Bat-Hound figures from Batman comics. And then here they are next to a few canine dogs from Plan B Toys police figures. And then here they are next to a few G.I. Joe Rottweiler figures. Now that we've taken a pretty in-depth look at his accessories, next let's check out the height of this figure. This is a Mafex figure. They're typically running around six, six and a half inches tall. So this John Wick here from bottom to top, looks like he's sitting at about six and a quarter, maybe a little bit above that, inches tall. Next, let's start this guy's articulation. Let's go ahead and start out with the head. Of course, his head can go around, can tilt from side to side, it's on a ball joint there, can look down that far and up that far. Shoulders go about 90 degrees out there. They're on a ball joint as well. They do have some drop down features. You can see here this very large gap. You can push them right back up. Kind of allows you to do a few extra things. Pull the arm out. You can kind of pull it forward a little bit. Give you a little bit of range of motion. Personally, I'd prefer a bicep cut over that though. Of course, his arms can also go up, down, and around. His elbows, kind of double jointed elbows in Mafex's own way. They can go all the way in. Looks like they're getting better about this over time. His wrist, of course, it's swivel and hinge. can go around the hinge as well. Then he's got an ab crunch in here, a ball joint. Really has a lot of range of motion in there. Of course, it can tilt, and it can go forward and back pretty nicely. Say that and that. Then he's got another ball joint down here. Pretty good range of motion. Of course, it can go side to side. It can also go forward and back pretty nicely. So as, if he's completely straight, he can look up about that far, not too much, then down quite a bit overall. Then his legs, then go out about that far, definitely not 90 degrees. Then go forward about that far, back, really not at all. His legs also have the drop down feature. They look absolutely hideous when they're dropped down. It can give this figure a tiny bit more height if needed, but push that thing back up there. It looks a lot better that way. Then his legs, also kind of double jointed in Mafex's own way, but it can still only go about 90 degrees back. And his feet, of course, they can go around, up and down, up and down. They can rock as well, and there's toe articulation. Next, I would like to check out the reuse between Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 John Wick figures, and I'm guessing it's going to be more than I'd like. Mafix is usually really good about not reusing sculpts and molds. Each one of their characters is pretty much a brand new sculpt. But of course, this isn't the same character. So let's go ahead and start at the bottom, work our way to the top. His feet pretty much appear to be identical. His pant legs are definitely identical. The wrinkles are in the exact same place. Moving forward, even his hands appear to be the same. His crotch area, his arms. His suit, torso, everything's the same. I can even see the same little dimple on both the ties. Everything except for the heads is identical, just painted differently. Next, let's check this guy out compared to some other action figures. 
starting with other Mafex figures, and then we'll work our way to compare him to other action figure lines to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise. Here he is compared to a bunch of different Mafex suited action figures from a few different various franchises that Mafex makes figures for. You can see that he fits in pretty good scale-wise with all of them. Eggsy is the only one that's considerably shorter, but he's also a much younger character. And then now let's check him out compared to some other action figure lines from different companies, starting with the larger ones and working our way smaller. Here he is next to some DST or Diamond Select Toys action figures. And then here he is next to some McFarlane Toys action figures. Here he is next to some DC Direct or DC Collectibles action figures. And then here he is next to some NECA action figures. And then here he is next to some Mezco 112th Soft Cloth Goods figures. Here he is next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And then here he is next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. Here he is next to some of his Mafex action figure brothers. And then here he is next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends figures. And then here he is next to some SH Figure Arts figures. And then here he is next to some Jazzwares figures. So all in all, this is a very solid figure. I do enjoy Mafex suited figures. This guy's a lot of uses in my action figure world. One is definitely going to stay as is. The other one is going to join my civilians and be customized into something else. So if I were to rate this figure, I'd go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. I gave the previous John Wick release a 7.5 out of 10, but I think that since this one is an identical sculpt, brings the rating down just a hair. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.